Well, welcome to the No Show. My name is Andrea Edwards. And my name is Joe Augustine. And at this particular point, we get to say anything we want about the third host who is absent, Tim Wade. Tim yeah. Wade is uh, unavailable. He is currently on the high seas. We hope uh, not trying to sell a new course to a pirate that stopped by on, the, on, 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 that, on that particular journey of his. Uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a show that is in celebration of knowledge, I, I was going to say. It's about uh, being in the know. It's about uh, being knowledgeable about opinions that hopefully matter uh, and, and could make a difference. Um, and normally, this is where I am going to do the introduction to our guest. Now, the thing is, today's guest, uh, I, I feel that no matter what I do, I could probably not do as well of an, or good as an introduction as, uh, as my co-host could because, well, she's family. <laughs> and uh, I think the best thing about this is if I get it wrong, uh, she'll she'll still get upset with uh, with Andrea anyway. So I just thought leave it just to Andrea to to introduce our our guest today. Oh, yeah, that's that's just being lazy, Joe. All right, here she is, <laughs> Philip Edwards. <laughs> and Joe, you are the thorn in the middle, right? No, well, I, the rose. I, oh, the we, rose. We had right. a we had a few words exchanged before we went on live. I think I'm perfectly positioned to to separate the two of you <laughs> just in case things break out. Uh, <laughs> no, no I've been I've, I've been wanting to have Philip Rowan for a long time because um, she also pays attention to the news and uh, she probably is a lot more on the pulse of what goes on in Australia just because she's living there, right? Whereas I'll, I'll sort of be looking around everywhere, um, but I think you know has a really value valuable perspective um, on on the world and she should be on the no show. So this will not <laughs> yeah, be the first you. if she behaves herself, of course, but. Yeah, so Philip, Philippa is co-founder of Skunk Work Productions, and I'm going to get you to talk about what that is, but she's also um, a musician, a conductor, although you're not playing anymore because you've got a titanium screw, is that right? I've got a titanium well, I, screw. I didn't realise you couldn't play anymore. Well, I, I don't know if I can't play. That's the thing is because I'm so worried about it breaking. And ah. and when and when I've played a few times, it's gone a bit wonky, and it's like oh, and, yeah. yeah, and it, yeah. So I have to presume it's not a piano we're talking about. It's going to no, be some kind, of, some kind of wind instrument, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah brass. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've got a degree in trumpet from the Victorian College of the Arts. Yes. Ooh. So yeah. So what else? What else? A, a teacher, <laughs> um, well, also uh, a radio DJ, but a very different oh, type of DJ, DJ to you too. To you, Joe. Oh yeah. So, wow. so welcome, Philippa. But yeah, give us give us a bit of a rundown of what you do and what's important to you. Ah, uh, okay. So what do I do? I do, um, I do, I do a lot of stuff, mostly to keep myself occupied so that I don't annoy the people around me. Um, mm. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, I'd say. Uh, so uh, as you know, Melbourne's been a bit of a disaster for the last two years, so not much conducting is going on. Um, I'm the musical director of Glen Ferry Brass and also the High Street Youth Band, which is Australia's oldest youth band um, they're a great bunch of kids and I do a, ra a radio show um, called Arts Weekly on 3NBS every second week and that's just like interviewing people in the arts in Melbourne um, of course that wasn't running last year very much at all um, and Skunk Works um, community and Skunk Works Productions it's kind of a company split into two one does professional shows like we have a Judy Garland show and the other half does community engagement um, kids and music and things like that yeah. And that's what I do. You just you just said Judy Garland show, and we're not going to go deeper into that. What What is the Judy Garland show? Well, Joe, <laughs> little does everyone know, but Judy Garland did a tour to Australia in 1964. So the show's called Judy Australia 1964. So we put together a show called The Silent Anzac, and we toured that to Europe in 2018 because that was 100 years for the end of the First World War. And then why, just before we toured, um, Leanne Keegan, who is a contralto with the Australian Opera, came up to me after we played the silent music. I said, I want you to do me show, Judy Garland. I went, oh, okay, and then left my head. And then on the bus trip, uh, uh, Bill was Bill Farr, who wrote it, uh, was sitting behind me, and I was talking to Jamie about it, and he popped his head through the seats and goes, oh, I think I might be able to help you with that. Mm -hmm. And then before you know it, we had a show, and we've, ha we've performed it uh, a couple of times, but – COVID's just destroyed it. But anyway, this year we're going to – so, yeah, it's the story of Judy. She came to Australia in 1964. She played Sydney. It was amazing. And she came to Melbourne on the train, and it was a disaster. And uh, so Nina Farrow, who's one of Australia's greatest voices, she's actually playing the role of Judy. And we had Andrew Broadbent, um, and he's an actor. Uh, we have to get a new guy because he's just got the role in Mary Poppins. So, yeah, that's our show. 
one mm. of the shows. So as Very you cool. can see, Joe, she's really boring like me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was thinking this, this show could potentially be a study in what happens uh, in a household in terms of sibling uh, rivalry uh, or you know, influence. No, no, right, right. I, I, I'm actually very curious about the parental influence as well. I'm, I'm trying to figure out, you know, where where this comes from, whether we attribute it as uh, as as, uh, as as blame or credit. <laughs> I, I always see the need for busyness as one of my mum's genetic inheritances, um, and it's it's you know while she will apply her her intelligence in different ways. Um, it, she's still like you know she takes on information in a really really fast way and philip and i are the same right we sort of we, we can go into a situation and pick up a lot of information that most people can't even see and that could be like a an exhibition or yeah. pe people and i think it's just yes yeah, i definitely i'd see it from mum you philippa i i see it more from when you're a music kid you end up with lots of parents well there's so, that too yeah yeah, so you, everyone, that we just had so many parents and we had Mrs Piney down the road and right. Mrs Hegney in, in Albury and you had uh, Megan Dunn's mum and dad. So we had all these different people and different influences and I think that kind of helps you not grow up too, in too, too much of a silo, of course. Mm -hmm. we, we can put ourselves in silos, but I don't think we came, we yeah. did come from a very lower middle class Catholic upbringing but we rebelled against it quite nicely thank you very much mm -hmm. um but yeah i think having lots of parents kind of i think formed yeah that's true yeah yeah so there cool. you go all right, all right. Do you want well, to... I'll, I'll just keep observing and, um, and, and and maybe asking curious <laughs> questions along the way. Uh, but uh, just to move it along, we, but the format of the show is where we talk about the news and then we comment about the news or some of our reactions or observations, uh, you know, and, and some, some of the blind spots as well that we may recognize. Um, I, I do some work with, uh, you know, with the, with the people in, uh, in academia uh, for COVID-19. So there's, there's a lot of stuff that I've been doing recently, uh, which may I don't know, it may help a little bit in our discussion about COVID, uh, but the rest of it, I'm not so keenly, uh, I haven't got my eyes so keenly open for. So this is where Andrea does the heavy lifting for the show and she sends out all these notes ahead of time that we're supposed to read. And then we guiltily tell her just about five minutes before that we've only got through half of it. So uh, <laughs> let's, let's get to some news, shall we? As long as you read the headlines, that's all I care. Well, so one of the first things I think it's important to honour is that it's Holocaust Rem Remembrance Day today. And, um, you know, never forgetting what hum humanity is capable of. But at the same time, in the recent week, we've had this um, Tennessee scandal, I suppose. There's a book called uh, Mouse, uh, A Survivor's Tale, which is a cartoon sort of based book on, on the Holocaust. And uh, that's Graphic creating, novel. Yeah. Uh, apparently because 13 and 14-year-olds can't deal with nudity or swearing, even though it's naked mice and naked rats, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, you mice, know, I, I, mice and cats, and it's right. a naked mouse in a small frame. Yeah, I, I, I've got a 13 and a 14 year old, or a 13 and 15 year old in the house. I, they, they can cope with nudity and swearing. I've, I, I've kind of discovered, you know. We, oh, but of course, we got to protect our kids, right? But anyway, important never to forget. Um, Wordle. We talked about Wordle last week. It's a new rage uh, taking over social media, and um, Joe's been an early adopter and got stuck in. So, just a bit of a question for you. Um, is there any chance you can participate without sharing the results on social media? Just asking there, for a friend. Completely, completely is yes. Oh, good. Um, but this, this is just, this is just, I you know it just, it just flagging to to everyone else that you're sort of in the team. But it's not, it's not, you're not. Uh, I don't know. I, I hope it's not uh, too much of a show off thing to do. But it's just kind of fun. It just sometimes you go to Facebook and all you see is Wordle. <laughs> and, uh, I'd rather see friends of my pictures, uh, pictures of my friends' kids or something, you know. But uh, no, but I'm just being, I'm just being facetious. But anyway, let's get into yeah. the news that really mattered. Okay, yeah. so you, you we may so, the, uh, you may prefer the other variant that is available now called Ludel. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's only Ludel? lewd words, only lewd five letter oh, words. Oh, Ludel. I see. I might play that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should be good at it. <laughs> All right. Um, so we started the week hearing that uh, hundreds were displaced after floods hit uh, Madagascar's capital, and we're we're ending the week knowing that dozens have been killed in Malawi, Madagascar, and Mozambique due to a storm called Anna. Uh, tens of thousands are impacted, possibly hundreds of thousands. They don't know yet. It's still early days, 
And I'm really sharing this story because last week we were talking about, uh, I think it was uh, one, of, one of the care agencies were talking about the 10 countries with the least attention from the media. So I want to make sure these countries are front and centre. But the UN are on the ground in these countries saying vulnerability is very, very high. The challenge is titanic. The challenge is extreme. So this is... I've got somebody knocking. So, Steve, if you're listening, could you tell the person who's hammering to stop hammering? Um, but, yeah, it's um, it's extreme. And these are the people on the front line of the climate crisis and they're not getting the funding and the support from the international community, of course. The UN and other countries are going in now to help. But um, that's a story that's going to be evolving over the next couple of days and it's they're going to keep getting battered. That's that's the problem. Um, did you, uh, do you want to mention anything there before I move on to the Ukraine? Oh, well, we'll see, new... Tonga is the same as well. Tonga, yeah. But there's yeah. aid getting there, right? Well, yeah, it took a long time. Australia sent $1 million and COVID to Tonga. So, oh. uh, yeah, I know. They sent a, a, a plane arrived from Brisbane and it's in the community. And it's like, oh, my God. Yeah, so it, that's, it is getting there, but slowly. Um, mm. Yeah. Uh, I, that was always one of the... The threats of putting aid on the ground in Tonga, yep. of, you know, bringing COVID in. It's a shame. Um, so we didn't discuss Ukraine last week. And my friend Vicky, hello, Vicky, who um, uh, checks in, she was asking me about it. And this is a part of the news that I'm constantly keeping my eyes on. But it's, I kind of keep it off to the side rather than focusing straight, straight at it because it's a very, very frustrating story, and as we've discussed before, it's a world. It's a war we don't. The world doesn't need. We can't afford this war. We can't afford any wars. But we did discuss last week that there's 3.4 million people in the Ukraine who are, who are in need of humanitarian aid because of the ongoing crisis. So we do need a solution. But two articles that I recommend everyone checks out on my weekend reads tomorrow. The first is how a UK, how a Russia UK Ukraine conflict might hit global markets. So it talks about the wide uh, financial ramifications. Joe, did you want to talk about that? Well, I, I must say, um, I've always known about Ukraine and Russia in terms of that that rivalry. I've never known about the impact of it. And 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 to be to be very honest, the the article you sent was an eye opener. I, I had not realized how much uh, of a linchpin you know Russia is uh, in that part of the world and how much. The Ukraine uh, plays a part in that as well, so yeah. I was I was actually quite surprised by 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 that, uh, and it does <laughs> it 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 really does come at a terrible time because right now in terms of things that could layer on top of each other, uh, global markets are kind of uh, in, in a bad state right now already yeah. without the additional need for the bad uh, additional bad news. I mean, Ukraine's playing a role. Uh, in in this uh, in, in the market as we speak, uh, but it's just it's just crazy to have things like fifty thousand troops amassed at the border, and right. we're not planning an invasion. We're just mm. here. Yeah. Uh, that that kind of brings bring, brinksmanship, and uh, and to know that it has that kind of impact, I didn't I didn't realize how much of an impact until I saw things about like the gas and how much of the world's uh, you know food supply actually is coming from that part of the world. And yeah, it, yeah, the it, wheat. Yeah, it's staggering. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing with that is um, 90 tons of lethal weapons sent from the US. I mean, Joe, yeah. do you think if 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 the U if Ukraine could just get into NATO, would that solve a lot of the problems here? <laughs> well, Russia doesn't I, want that, right? No. So, is that a solution or a step forward or a step backwards? Uh, yeah. I think the problem that we have now is 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 in terms of the agreements that are in place. Uh, even if you are part of NATO, I don't know whether that uh, says that much about you anymore. As in, like, is is, yeah. is NATO is yeah. having a membership with NATO sort of anything to to, to sort of uh, show bare your teeth with? You know, uh, it's it's like a it's like a, a membership card now. Everyone's got you know. Yeah. Do you know it's something else I've been listening to? Um, sorry, I'm from hijacking. Um, I, I love Rachel Meadow on MSNBC, yeah. and I often listen to her when I go for a walk. Um, and she was she's been talking this week about the Russians have uh, allegedly um, in the Norwegian Sea cut one of the cables un underneath uh, that picks up submarine movement, and then next week the Russians are going into international waters, but near Ireland. 
Um, and they've been, last year they were seen zigzagging, looking, because underneath there's their cables, their internet cables and all the rest of it. I'm not a tech head. And then um, and then next week they're doing war, war games exactly in that point. And the Irish fishermen have gone, uh, no, you're not. That's where we fish. So the Irish fishermen have gone to the consulate and had a, a meeting with these guys to say, you're not doing that. That's where we work. And the Irish are just trying to say, no, this is what we're doing. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and that's another thing. They could cut off. They, if they get their submarines in there, they could cut off the um, – yeah, have a look at it. It's actually yeah. being really interesting. Wow. They're just being cheeky buggers. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I mean, they put, I think, I think it's pretty much on brand as well that the Irish say, like, oh, no, you're not getting anywhere. We have work yeah. to do here. <laughs> yeah, they're going, this is our fishing. And like, I think the season starts, the mussel season or the some, there's some season starts on Tuesday. And they've yeah. gone, nah, you can take your submarines and take them somewhere else. Good yeah, on, but then they're only ones seem to be standing up the, to the Russians as a bunch of blokes in boats with bad hats. Yeah. <laughs> But then, you know, but then you, you always, I mean, I always look at Russian news, I always try and look at it with a different lens because sometimes if you get an English version of news from Russia and the way they tell the story, it's very different to the Western media's version of the story. Yeah. And I think we too often accept the version from the region that we come from. Yeah. And we've got to be so careful of that. But, you know, like Putin, you know, I mean, so, yeah. But the other thing that was obviously that happened that was big news this week is the Nord Stream 2 pipeline yeah. could be on the chopping block, obviously, if Russia invades Ukraine. So will that make an impact? So, look, we're just, we just have to wait and see. We None of us know where this one's going. Is this we, is this just them throwing a massive dead cat because the UK government's just falling apart? The Australian, not the Australian, not that we even... And the Americans are even inflation. Is this just a way of the brinkmanship to get everyone's attention off the homegrown problems happening? Well, yeah, I mean, because the homegrown problems. And you know, later we'll look at the the trust barometer from Edelman, and Russia's sitting way down at the bottom, you know, and has been for a number of years. So it's not like you know, and there's regular protests, there's regular issues in Russia. Um, I don't know. It's it's you know, we, we need to get we need to get a, somebody from Russia on to get the Russian view because. I, th I think that's lacking for most of us in this world. There's um, Rachel Maddow. Oh, she had a really cool. Um, oh, she is she's Russian. I'll find the name and I'll let, I'll let you know. You can read some of her stuff because her her interpretation of it was actually quite. She was really good. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, we heard this week that the police are now investigating the uh, Downing Street lockdown parties, and saw yeah. Boris in Parliament. Furiously refusing to to resign, so let's see what's uh, going to go on there. And then in Australia, it's been Australia Day this week, and this is a day that many love, and it's also a day that many lo no longer support. So from my perspective, um, the world's so divided. Australia agreeing to change the date because it's not a meaningful date to Australians, but it is a meaningful date to the original inhabitants of Australia. Um, mm. I think would go a long way to generating some goodwill and unify our country. We don't have the leadership, obviously, in no. place that is capable of delivering on that. But I don't know. I think the momentum around that is definitely building. Oh, seventy-five percent uh, of people want change. Um, people, it, it, the problem Australia is Australia Day change. Do you mean? Yeah, change the 75%, date. Seventy-five percent, right? Seventy-five at least. Um, most reasonable people think the same thing. Um, it's just, it's just, it's the, it's the usual cohort of the guys that own the media. The you know that kind of person they spout all the stuff and you're but the thing is it's only been a national holiday since 1994 we're not talking about a 200 year tradition here yeah. we're talking about something that's happened in our lifetime and yeah. it was more of a holiday to like harbor the end of summer yeah, it's the exactly. day that the boats came and took over the as if oh you know what japan's going to come to australia and on the day, a hundred years later, they're going to take it and they're going to massacre and they're going to do all the stuff. And then two hundred years later, they're going to say, "You will celebrate our arrival on this date, and you will be happy with it." And that yeah. would just not happen to white people. So we need to it, change the date. It's just yeah. there's, there's no more arguing. Arguing, just change the date. Yeah. Okay. And have they got a new date? And how much has it got to do with cricket? Uh, no, it's, it's, you know what, it's all to do with at the barbecue at the end of January. Um, so let's have another day at the, the 27th of January. But you know what we need to do? We need to sit down with the um, First Nations people and say, what do you, what do you reckon? 
We'd like yeah. to celebrate. We need a day, maybe like a Thanksgiving day, say, or something. You can still have a barbecue if it's not Thanksgiving, but it's something, you know, it doesn't need to be some jingoistic where you're uh, Australia flag and be a bogan day. We can actually mm -hmm. come together properly and appreciate all of Australia on that day. How nice would that be? Yeah. It just seems to be the, the hardest thing to think about. It's like, I know. But, you know, you know, when we look at the divisions in the world, it's one of those things that it could be a real example of unity, yeah. you know. But, um, yep. but instead, what, what got everyone's attention this week in the news, of course, in Australia was a young woman who didn't smile for a man. Oh, uh, no. And, of course, <laughs> that was Grace Tame, who, who was just finishing up her year as Australia of the Year, and the person that she didn't sp smile at was uh, the Prime Minister, ScoMo. Uh, it's you don't call him ScoMo. Call him Scott. Scomo is a name he gave himself to okay. make himself the ordinary bloke. You call him Scott. Right. Okay, I'll call him Scott. Then. You don't call him Mr. Morrison. You call him <laughs> Scott because that's what he calls everybody else by their first name. In a like, yeah, no, nah, Scott. Uh, I've seen lots of different opinions. People say that she missed an opportunity to, you know, be the better person. Oh. <laughs> Just um, that, uh, but Sorry. you know, and and, and oh, yeah, I'm I'm open to that. Um, she, but like it's. Smiling at someone that you have zero respect for is is a very, very, very difficult thing to do if you've ever been in that situation. Um, and especially in this case, because she, she was talking about violence against women in Australia, which is crazy. In fact, one of the yeah, one of the uh, one of the pieces today that was sort of sort of talking about the fact she didn't smile at him, underneath the piece there was this visual where it had three murders of women. That was the ABC being reported website. in that week, right? Yep. Um, a, a woman so, and a child and two other women. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a big issue and he hasn't taken it seriously and he hasn't done everything he can. So, for me, he he deserved the contempt that she showed him that day. But other people don't agree. So, another but, uh, one of those issues where everyone gets really excited and passionate about it. Uh, I, think, I think people just need to sit down. So, she's a high-functioning autistic girl that was oh, raped that repeated she's raped repeatedly as a 15 year old um by a teacher at her school scott morrison put amanda stoker in as the assistant minister for women and she um she she's a supporter of a woman called bettina aunt who gave the rapist a platform yeah. and and felt sorry for him so on every level her mate Brittany higgins this government, this girl was raped. Doesn't matter how doesn't matter how short a skirt was. She was raped in Parliament, and they didn't call the police. They called in the steam cleaners. The respect at work. Fifty five things were suggested. The forty nine they've ignored. They he went to the he refused to go to the women's march, and then made the comment that we're just lucky we're, and we're not in other countries because we would have been shot on every level. And even even that actual instance, she went to that. She am I allowed to rant? Yeah. <laughs> Probably should check first. She too, went too to the, <laughs> <laughs> she went to that event as the outgoing Australian of the Year, invited by the Governor General, not to Scott Morrison's house. She went, and he he was there. I, I read somewhere that he actually wasn't supposed to be there, but he wanted the photo op. So he calls her over like a dog. Grace, Grace, come out, Grace, and and she didn't smile at him. Why would you? And then. Mm. And the good thing she did was she knew that if her oh, – well, I don't know that she knew this, but – and maybe she didn't even think about it. She didn't – she did not let that face up the whole time because all it would take of one of his photo op guys is to get the moment she opened her eyes or smiled and they could have used that. And she didn't. And she mm. stood – she stood her ground. And you know what? Sit down if you've got a problem with it because the reason why bad things happen is because these girls, she the, – it, all the people that have been subjected to this are just forced to re-traumatise themselves by telling what's going on and mm. then smile at their perpetrators because it's making people feel uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. no, he's not. He, you know, he's just a bit touchy, you know. You know that one, um, Andrea. So, yeah, yeah. no, nah, sit down. No, it's, no, it's good. I'm, I'm, it's good to have you here because you, you're – You'll be flooded with this story and be getting so many perspectives on this story. Mm. I'm, I'm getting the bits and pieces like what you're sharing, some other friends in my community sharing. And I think I think it's really important to be able to get that perspective from inside the nation that's going through it. Yeah. And, and some really thoughtful and compelling articles are being published by men and women. Yeah. Uh, uh, and about some appalling the ones. Oh, yeah, of course. Call it, um, her, her, talking about her breeding like it's she's a, some sort of horse. And, and, and yeah, and then you've got the counter and people are just flooding 
with pictures of how he treats women and pictures yeah. of his it's the disdain and the contempt he holds women in. So, yeah. I mean, you know, maybe, you know, I'm proud of her for doing it. Yeah. She's made more of a statement in that three-second grab than any, like, that will go down in the annals of history. And that's, you know, nice lady. What's the saying? Nice women don't make change or whatever it is. Yeah, it's, it, yeah. Was called, it was called Iconic the second it was published. Yeah. Which is unusual. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. What what I find very interesting about this particular moment for me is my own sense of, you know, you know, like where where the right is and and all that, and and it's been shifting all throughout this conversation as as you've been as you've been filling us in with more details, um, and, and I, I th and I think my sort of uh, naivety about the story actually is, is is probably why why the world works the way it does is it, it's. Um, people will react in the in the way I initially reacted internally to the story, which was like, oh no, someone who doesn't want to smile, or whatever it is, and, and it's a it's a it's one of those circumstances where it would be kind of kind of the nice thing to do, whatever it is, and someone saying someone someone's making a statement, um, but that's all that they will have in their perspective. They won't have the rest of what you've just talked about yeah. and and the, the, the whole backstory. Um, and yeah, it's just it's just one of those things. It's like it's like it, it seldom gets out, right? And I think what's no. interesting about this is now it's getting out, and now you're you're sharing this, and you, you've you've changed my perspective on that. I, I I really was about to say something, which had I said it back then, uh, by the end of your rant, it would have been a very very insensitive thing to say. Right? But also, so I probably had, would have ripped your face off. So yeah, I, I had the sense <laughs> to shut up for a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I rant. I, I just I find it infuriating. Um, and the right wing media just they're just looking for anything now, and it's like, and people can see through it all now. And it, yeah. it, and it has to be ugly before it gets better. It, there's gonna have there's gonna be more of this stuff, and you know, and it's exposing the the really entrenched misogynists, and there's so many of them are in uh, media as well as politics. So it's actually exposing them. So it's making it easier for them to be seen. So that's a, it's a good thing, even though it's a hard thing. Yeah, you've you got to, you know, every time we go through a, a fundamental change where a lot of sort of, you know, ag aggressive sort of media and conversation happens and a lot of people sit in the middle of it and go, and they're all fight, everyone's fighting and talking and sharing their opinions and disagreeing with each other. But I actually always find it a, it's a cleansing period, right, mm. where you, you need to get all the words out before everyone can stand back and go, right, so what do we really want? I just wanted yeah. to I just wanted to say mm. looking good, Philly. I'm presuming that's Steve. Elvin yeah, Lee's, Steve. Yeah, Elvin Lee's with us here. He's one of my friends from Singapore many, many years, and we've got a Russian person who's written Vom Red, and I don't know what that means. Um, Vom Red. Yeah. So one sorry. One word. Uh, <laughs> uh, two words. But um, anyway, good to have you here, and nice to see you here, Elvin. Yeah, we're so long ado a catch up. So yeah, leave a comment. We'll we'll check them out. All right, should we move on to COVID? You guys ready? Yeah. So, Joe, you you first shared this with me. There's been oh. some rumblings about uh, a new version of Omicron, uh, which is now called BA two. So it's a new sub variant. It's highly contagious. It's more contagious than the original version of Omicron. But it is not more deadly, so that's good news. The World World Health Organization does not consider it a variant of concern. So we're going to keep having variants while we have such a large percentage of the population around the world unvaccinated. But uh, Joe, anything you wanted to add based on what you've been seeing this week? Well, I was just going to say that you know, like every time a new, more contagious variant comes on, it begins to replace it. So actually, it is replacing Omicron, uh, the mm. original BA one. Uh, is actually replacing it in terms of, of infections. Uh, the other thing that is important to note, though, is this 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 number and how it relates to things. So even pe people tend to, to pick up on this. Uh, it's less serious or less whatever, right? They 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 they, they, they take that on and then they they go okay. Then we, therefore we don't have to worry so much about it. Um, there is first of all a, a number of things happening. One is the and 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 you shared that as well. The number of uh, deaths in the U.S. it's matching the number 
uh, as when Delta was as at its peak, right? So that's one aspect of it. And that has to do with hospitalizations. Yeah. Um, there is another aspect about COVID, which we are not thinking about. And uh, a lot of a lot of people haven't haven't factored it in uh, when they, when they think about things like uh, you know pediatric vaccinations, right? Which is the long term effects of mm-hmm. of COVID. Uh, so I just had a I just produced a webinar just uh, last night actually where they were talking about pediatric um, uh, COVID and long COVID. And one of the areas that people don't think about much is how COVID affects your biodome. Right, because you know, you, you, when, you, when you when you get COVID, you lose your sense of taste and whatever it is, you get the diarrhea, you get a lot of stuff. So it actually is affecting your gut as well, and some of those are very very long term effects, and they can last. You know, uh, we, we we don't know exactly what the long term effects can be and how long they'll last, uh, but we know that Omicron also is more uh, it's more serious for young people now than it used to be that than, than the previous uh, forms of, of COVID as well. So what it means is that young people are actually exposed to severe, uh, some, 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 some possible severe disease as well, if they're not vaccinated. And so you have all these young kids that are because, because first of all, the vaccinations didn't roll out as early. So you have a lot of young kids who are not vaccinated, but you also have a lot of parents who don't want to, uh, to vaccinate the kids because they have some fears and 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 the 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 legitimate concerns that you may have about the risks of of, of getting a vaccination, uh, but the weighing of the relative risk is what what um, the, the the clinicians are worried about. People don't make a rational decision that says that you know what the 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 risk of 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 uh, of side effects from the vaccination is actually very low. It's about maybe one in a million. Whereas the risks from getting COVID and the, and the kind of complications you can have with it, if you if you catch COVID now, especially Omicron, uh, are pretty significant. So you know those those things you talked about the last time as well about uh, how some people with long COVID end up you know committing suicide because it's such a drastic change to to, to their life. Um, those are the kinds of of, of of dangers that actually young people are also exposed to because of how Omicron works, you know, younger people can get infected and it spreads so fast as well. It means that they have, they have now a, a, a greater opportunity uh, to catch it. Yeah. So the, the, the need for vaccination um, is higher than ever before. Based on the work you've been doing, Joe, is that, look, we were talking about it last week. I don't, uh, I don't envy a, a parent of, of an under 12 at the moment to, to, to make the decision. I mean, I know I would, I know I would make the decision to vaccinate my children and, and but I know I would have gone really deep into into the science and the research to to make that decision. Is there anywhere that you could recommend a resource, um, it's, it's just an expert, something that you could recommend? Obviously, your webinar that you produced, <laughs> um, yeah. where people can people can go and dig into that information so they can feel more that they're making the right decision. Uh, not no one single resource, but I can say uh, go go and look for information on both sides of your fear, right? Because you, you, you have fears that, and then you, you want to look for the information that confirms um, your decision, right? Yeah. Be prepared to go the other way as well and ask, yeah. okay, you know, don't just research the, 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 the dangers of the COVID vaccine, um, but also do the research on, on the dangers of long COVID and uh, pediatric COVID and th- those kinds of things. Uh, because once you have both sides of it, then you can make that that better choice. Um, okay. If you don't, if you if you if you're obviously just going to 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 immerse yourself only in the news that confirms your fears, uh, it's very likely you won't make a, a choice that, without that additional information, is is a completely valid choice. You know, if you don't if you don't know about the dangers of of long COVID and pediatric uh, conditions uh, associated with with, with COVID. Uh, the, you're not making, you're not taking much of a risk with keeping your child away from the vaccine, right? Yeah. And you know, it, yeah, it makes a difference. Is yeah, the CD, nice. like CDC is a, a website? Are there any like reputable, like is that considered a reputable website with easily accessible and understood information for just if you, if, Joe, if you trust, Joe Blow? If you trust yeah. them. But yeah. I mean, every, every country has their own Ministry of Health. So it yeah. depends on... If you, if, it depends on which government's in power, and if you if you're on their side, if you're not on their side, you know. Yeah. So, um, but somewhere like Singapore, I would trust um, the information that they would post there. Um, yeah. And you can, because you can go anywhere, any part of the world for for information. So where I think you know where the citizens 
have high yeah. trust. Yeah. It's probably uh, a good yeah, start. Yeah. I, I think it links back to this thing where we're, we're going to talk about schedule for the end of the show where we talk about trust, mm. right? But it, yeah. it is that problem uh, because if you're talking about uh, where this fear comes from, like saying, if you talk about a US centric audience, um, they're concerned to start with uh, about the, the the vaccine and they hear all these other talk about all this other talk about um uh, conspiracies and hiding the the facts and this and that and that the government has its own agenda uh in, in that kind of a scenario it's almost like the cdc isn't the place that you would send someone to convince them because it's it's like um it's like saying uh, go to church to find out why you need to go to church right <laughs> it, it's it's uh, the, the the skepticism isn't going to help you make the right choice so um yeah. While well, I see them as reliable sources, I don't know if they're the best ways to convince someone. So it, it really has to be. Uh, I, I think that uh, the the active speakers in our world have to have to be speaking the right thing, right? So like uh, yeah. like if you you shared Howard uh, Howard Stern, I think you know doing uh, in my mind what is the right thing, um, but we, we need more of that. Yeah, I mean obviously the World Health Organization as well. Um, I've, I've heard uh, a whole bunch of the doctors working for the World Health Organization and speaking at events over the last couple of years, and um, I've found them some of the most incredible speakers I've ever heard, you know, just from a genuine integrity perspective. So, but look, like Joe said, look at both sides. If you're determined not to vaccinate your children, at least be informed on what the other side is and vice versa. But, you know, we, we don't have to make that decision. Not, all of us have children 12 or older, right? Yeah, but I think the other thing is people have need to. Oh, Look, we've lost your sound there. Oh, yeah, there you are. Oh, you're back now. Am I there? Yeah. I don't know what happened then. Uh, yeah, people need to graciously accept the consequences of their choices. Though, if you choose not to vaccinate your kids, for whatever reason, good or bad, you can't then uh, have a tantrum because they're not welcome at uh, at places that have um, vaccine mandates. You don't. Mm. You can't. You can't have it both ways. Yeah. And you might have a very good reason. Um, you know, well done you. Um, but no, you, if you if you don't if you can't or won't can't or won't vaccinate your kids or yeah. yourself, there's no there's no tantrums in at shopping centres. Yeah, but I, but I think it's just really important to educate yourself around. You oh know, I've yeah, been re reading a lot about the neurological damage that's been happening to children who get COVID. Um, yeah, because it's, it's inflammatory. Yeah, Joe. Yeah. Yeah, it's, the, yeah, the 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 neurological the thing. The funny thing about that is that it's it's biodome associated because your brain and your gut actually is connected uh, mm, yeah. in all the ways it is right, and so they're they're finding that link. They're, they're discovering uh, more about the science of it. So that that that's how that that's being. Um, you know, uh, they're, they're seeing what the impact is based on brain brain gut uh, relationship. Yeah. yeah, gut health gut health is starting to come up more as well. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's going to be like in a few years' time when we look back on this time and where we were and what we knew at this time compared to what we yeah. will know. It's, it's it's kind of fascinating to think about the leaps that we've already made but the leaps that we will continue to make in our knowledge. And yeah. um, anyone who's still thinking the same way that they were two years ago is not paying attention to all these leaps of knowledge and information and, and, and valid research that's taken place, you know. So, yeah. A lot of people don't mind, have... Right? Having a growth mindset is not is uh, not as uh, common as you think it would be. So well, some people the, the, cannot change. Yeah, and the, and the real challenge with COVID and and why it's so uh, difficult to wrap yourself around it is because twenty uh, getting COVID isn't like uh, the flip of a coin where the two sides right. It's actually a twenty sided die, where uh, you get a different thing uh, if you're a different person and you have a different makeup. So COVID isn't doesn't represent one kind of disease it's it really is a kind of a it's a lucky draw where you you get all kinds of things you you, you have you have what you call the, the broad tendencies and then you'll have the 70 year old who gets COVID and it's completely fine you'll have the 93 year old i think you know, from italy the oldest lady she gets it and she's fine and then you'll have uh someone who's 20 something and they don't turn out you know, as 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 happily, you know, so yeah. it's it, it's it's one of the the, the troubles about COVID is, is that it's 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 also very hard to know exactly what works because every time something else happens when 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 someone gets COVID, someone someone has a different reaction to it. So yeah, you're right about all the progress in science, but it also has created all these um, these 
it's it's I I can't think of the exact or, or right way of of, of uh, uh, the right metaphor for it, but you know it's like it's like an ant hill, I guess. You know, it's one one entrance at the top, but there's so many different ways you could go underneath. Yeah. And that's what COVID is. It's like you know, yeah. uh, it's uh, it's it's like many many versions of the uh, the, the man holding the, the blind man holding the elephant, right? So everybody sees a different thing. <laughs> I like the ant hill. Ant hill. Um, okay, so you mentioned it earlier, but the daily U.S. Uh, U.S. death toll from COVID now matches Delta. So two th- two thousand people are dying from the virus every day at the yeah. moment, which matches late, uh, uh, last uh, late September. A large proportion of the dead are 65 years or older or unvaccinated. And um, as Joe's mentioned, um, a lot of the deaths are happening because hospitals are overflowing. So people who potentially could survive aren't surviving because, because you know, because of the crazy situation. We saw that in India with the big, big, big wave that hit there, people just couldn't get access to oxygen. They couldn't get into hospitals and they died and they probably could have uh, survived if, if the facilities were able to, you know, help. So to date, there's 866,000 people who have died of COVID in the US. So I suppose in the next couple of months, we'll probably be looking at the million mark. And uh, still, still, it's only like 60, uh, low 60% of fully vaccinated and boosted, boosted is even lower, but fully vaccinated people. So it's a bit of a sad one. Um, it's well, interesting. Oh, sorry, Joe. I was just going to be interesting to find out the um, the the total deaths in America compared to like three years ago, just to see the, the spike from people dying because they had a heart attack and couldn't get to a hospital or excess things, deaths. Yeah, excess deaths from it. Yeah, yeah. There's if you do a search for excess deaths, um, they 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 show you the information for every country. Just called where, that excess yeah. deaths. Mm. Right. Yeah, um, two other pieces. Term, term is excess Sorry. mortality, right? I think I think there's that the the technical word for it. I think excess mortality. Potentially, yes. <laughs> yeah. Now, and and I was going to say the um, oh, I forgot what I'm going to say now. Okay. Uh, now, we, we, the tragedy of the situation right now is that the the situation is different, as in like um, there are now more drugs to treat COVID, and 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 the the, the, the problem that, that America is facing. Is really one of education as well and belief, right? It's it's the thing where I have COVID, it's not serious. I don't have to worry about it. I can't. I, I won't. I won't deal with it. I don't find out I have it. I don't do whatever it is, and then it then it gets out of hand, and then you know, despite everything that we have right now that can treat COVID, uh, I mean, COVID even even if you get the the more serious kind is very survivable now because. There are treatments. There, there, there are therapies that can that can that can be uh, applied to you, even if you're not in hospital, uh, and and that's what's available, and that's not 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 what what is being used as widely as it could. So what what ends up happening is, someone does catch COVID, uh, they do have some of the early symptoms of it. They could have perhaps received the treatment that would have helped them prevent them get to the next stage where they wound up in hospital. Uh, and once you end up in hospital, it's 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 usually not because it, it, I mean we're we're a bit more wimpy in Singapore. If you if you if you if you have a, a bit of a cough uh, and you think that it's something serious, you probably will end up in the hospital because you think okay, you know I can do it. It's not too expensive as well, you know. But it's a different story in the U.S. The U.S. is like it's like um, you 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 run a, you're running a financial risk to step into a hospital, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's what's stopping people from actually sort of taking that step to, that that might save their lives. So. Yeah. I think that that's a, the real tragedy is that, is that we have uh, such a high level of vaccination. That's one part of it, but it's also the level at, at which the treatments have come to. You've got all these things that could have helped someone if if the older person who caught COVID uh, stepped into 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 a medical or into a healthcare environment and was able to get one of those oral treatments that would have helped as well. That could have averted the the, the next level, you know. Mm. I was listening to MSNBC today and they've, um, Florida, uh, they're getting a new Surgeon General and at his hearing, they, they, the, the girl, the Democratic lady was asking him, him, do you believe in vaccines? And he wouldn't answer the question yes or no. They're trying to get rid of the vaccine mandate, but they're trying to flood the place with the, mon- what's that, mono, mono, the mono treatment? Tunnel. Yeah, but the problem with yeah. that is that they're saying is that they, they stop sending it to, to Florida because it doesn't work on Omicron. So 
this kind mm. of Florida is kind of thinking, well, we're not going to get vaccines because if we get sick, we'll just have these things. And now those things aren't turning up because they don't work for Omicron. And you just go, oh, my God, this is yeah, like... Yeah. I've got yeah. some friends living in Florida. It's a it's a, a slightly frustrating place to be living through a pandemic from, yeah. from what they've been sharing on social media. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, two pieces... Uh, one in the New York Times, yes, Omicron is loosening its hold, but the pandemic has not ended. Another one in Al Jazeera, endemic versus pandemic diseases, which really goes into the history of them. Just from a just from a knowledge perspective, I recommend reading both of those in my weekend reads. But uh, you mentioned it earlier. So the world mourned the passing of Meatloaf last week. Uh, he was definitely well loved. I did not participate in the in the love fest that was shared just because um, he did something many, many years ago and I found it really disgusting and it turned me off him for life. But anyway, he was also a very out, outspoken anti-vaxxer and anti-masker and you got to, it makes you wonder, did he regret um, his decision and will we ever know? But Howard Stern, of all people, has urged Meatloaf's family to speak out on COVID vaccines amid the rockers' death. So... Let's see. Let's see if they do. Did he change his mind at the end? You know, but um, anyway, if I'm not expressing love, that's why I'm not expressing love for him. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I read I read the article and one thing that I found interesting was that there was never any confirmation that uh, he died from COVID, right? I, I don't think it's uh, it was it, it's not established what he actually died from. Uh, it, but it, 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 it was it was a, a very under underreported part of the story. The majority mm -hmm. of the story just focused on his death. Uh, yeah. it, you had to search for it. Okay, okay. So yeah. it was confirmed that it was to do with COVID. Was that? Oh, the, it was definitely was that... COVID. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I well, what I what I found was interesting about uh, the, the the story was about you know how it didn't begin with this thing about about not trying to not not wanting to wear masks at all, but just that masks we were, were so restrictive and so uncomfortable that the rebellion was against that and it was like you say this yeah. is too hard to do so i want to be free and i and i and, and then so you, you you kind of like uh push in the opposite direction um i i'm just amazed at the number of uh, talk show hosts that have died you know the the, the ones who are uh, anti-vaxxers uh, I, I, I think it was four or five i think last year you know that that perished and and yeah. you know what, what do you what do you say then you know do you have do you leave a voice message behind that goes like oops sorry <laughs> yeah yeah, religious leaders too. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, a lot. Yeah, and they're filling Isn't the hospitals. That... Yeah, um, we've got a nurse with quite a few nurse friends, and you know, and they often, when they're intubating them, actually, one of them said, as they're about to intubate people, their loved ones are still saying, "Oh, good, give him the vitamin C, give him the invermectin," and they're saying, "No, no, it's too late. Mm. It's, yeah, no, it's not going to work. This is the only thing that's going to keep him alive." Yeah, yeah so. And once you've got that I, I'm, I'm going to say another yeah. word, which uh, which is, is going to cause some consternation. But you know, like um, you know, how there was a lot of talk about how uh, how ivermectin doesn't do very much with the other sort of um, COVID treatments. Uh, irritatingly enough, there seems to be some indication that it does help in Omicron. So mm. <laughs> take that but, and talk you know, it. But Joe, <laughs> isn't it one of those things? though, you just want the you just want the information to be true and not pushed by people that aren't scientists. Everyone wanted to go, yep. if a scientist came forward, like a peer-reviewed study and blah, 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 and it's all written and reviewed and all the rest of it, you go, oh, yeah, how interesting is that? How hilarious that this time last year it didn't work against Delta, but it's going to work against Omicron, so off we go. And everyone would yeah. go, all right, then, and they'd take the Invermectin. But because everything's been so politicised, and yep. it's this is a health catastrophe and it's yep. been made a political catastrophe, and that, and therefore yep. this pandemic is going to go for years because yeah, you can't yeah. get it all in one sock. Yeah. Well, what well, the the scientific attitude, which is hard to hard to have, is the one where you go like, "I was wrong." Smile, because now I found mm -hmm. out I was wrong, right? A yeah. And it's a uh, we 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 have, we have too much invested in what we said before and what it looks like when we're wrong yeah. now. Uh, yeah. That it, it applies very much to science as well. So all the stuff that we there's a lot of talk in Singapore about flip flopping. But essentially, what the what the government here has been doing is it's it's been agile. You know, it's mm. been yeah. learning what is the smart thing at this particular point, and then at this yeah. particular point, what it is, right? All right. But, just uh, before, uh, just it, before we move on to the next story, Joe, I just want to make sure we're not uh, spreaders of fake news. So, is this invermectin angle with Omicron 
verified? Uh, it's it was shared by one of the doctors from out of India. Uh, we, we had we have a, a webinar and they were talking about the 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 the, the, the ivermectins, right? So it's it's the way yeah. it, it's the way it works uh, in relationship to um, uh, some of the, some of the, the 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 I can't remember what the exact words were because I'm not I'm not a doctor, but it's just it's just the way it engages uh, the, the 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 body system. And mm -hmm. so it does have some. It, it does seem to, to to show some promise there, but uh, it, it, it you know the the real problem with ivermectin, for instance, is because it's such an old drug, and even if it could do something as well, even if there's a way to figure it out, there's no money in it for the studies to be carried out to prove it yeah. uh, in in that way as well. Uh, everybody would rather try and find a new way that they can monetize to to to, to prove that it kind of works. Um, I, I will say that there's enough um, work that's been done in the field where they've used ivermectin in combination with a number of other things, it's zinc and, and, and other stuff, um, that seems to have provided some good results in India, right? And so you've right. got to go, does it work? Does it not work? Uh, we don't have a full double-blind test, uh, large-scale clinical trial to prove that it worked, but it seemed to have had some impact there as well. So it's 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 hard to say scientifically you can't you can't say there's enough of a clinical trial to say everything is confirmed 100 percent but yeah. there's also uh, and this is the trouble with it right when you look at a ten, a, a tendency for things to happen do you go like there's nothing there or is there something there yeah yeah hmm. no no it's interesting when uh, when invermectin first came up so i'm lucky to have a a friend who's a chief research officer for a biotech company and i just dropped him a note and go i've heard about this what do you think because of course in the developing world something like that's great because it's cheap yep. it's easily accessible you know yeah um and i just had a really good conversation and he basically said it's not but it doesn't mean it's not relevant now so you know mm -hmm. obviously keeping an open mind right um another story here's how anti-vaxxers use instagram to monetize COVID 19 vaccine fake news so these stories are really 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 important if you are following someone and you believe in what they are saying, I think it's really important to also know how they make money or don't make money um, because it's a really important part of assessing their credibility. There's a lot of people out there who are listening to people and those people are making millions. Now, the problem is we can't comprehend how somebody could be wired that way, which makes it difficult for us to to, to even challenge that. And they're like, it's well, it's all right for them to make a little bit of money. Um, but if they're making money by by sharing a message which is false or even dangerous for their audience and could potentially create harm for their audience, which we've seen many, many examples of, I think that's a, it should be the first warning flag that maybe that's a person that might not be telling the whole truth. But well, that's, that's just Foxtel. My thought. That's Foxtel, not just Instagram. No. Foxtel, they have a mandate. Anti, they have a vaccine mandate, and that they're, they're on every night spouting, "Don't take, don't take the vaccine." Yeah. So, and they they know it's it's wrong, um, and no one stops them, so they keep going. And you know, that's but part if of they the have to have a challenge, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but yeah, but I thought that was a good one. And our final piece, another big piece around COVID, was a Boston a Boston hospital uh, has denied a heart transplant to a man because he hasn't got the COVID-19 vaccine. This guy's 31, he's a young dad, and without the vaccine, it's a no. So man, it's really created some... So I don't just read the article. Sometimes I actually go and read the comments, which is something you should only do when you're feeling in a sane state of mind. But <laughs> to, to get a transplant, you have to have a COVID vaccine, but you also have to have lots and lots and lots of vaccines uh, because you're... Your, your immune system is compromised from the medications which will keep you alive after you've had the actual transplant and keep the, the organ going. And obviously they don't want to waste any organs in a world where there's a shortage. So, um, you know, for me, it's like, okay, um, this, this is the way it goes. Uh, but the conversations have been really enlightening. Um, there's been a lot of people who have been incredibly malicious. And we, we talked about that last week. I think you went there for that, Joe. Um, some of the saying. Well, you can't force him to vaccinate. And I kind of think that's missing the point. They're not really forcing him to vaccinate. They're saying if you want to do this procedure, then it's a, re a requirement of the procedure is vaccination. 
So, you know, I don't see that as forcing. And, of course, then you've got the other side saying it's criminal. They, they would take away the opportunity for a 31-year-old man to live. Um, so, you know, I don't know. To me, if you're going to go for a transplant, you've got to get vaccinated, not just with COVID, for COVID, but for everything, to, to give yourself yeah. a chance to live. Because if you die because of your decision, somebody else missed out on that heart and they yeah. they die, right? So, you know, I don't know. What do you guys think? That, that's one of the toughest things when you talk about medical ethics, right? And uh, mm. and and how do you make that calculation? Because in, in in the face of medical ethics, or in fact, sometimes just just straight on ethics, um, like you know, the the the, the more uh, the the more logical choice or the or the correct choice seems insane uh, to everybody else who's in, involved, right? Um, one of the examples that I that I always think about is, is like, for instance, you can you can do you can spend uh, hundreds of thousands or even even twenty thousand dollars on trying to save one person's eyes, right, in terms of their sight, and it feels like a really good thing. But if you took that money and did a very simple procedure, you could save uh, twenty thousand children from losing their sight in a third world country. Yeah. And the thing is, what what is the better choice? The 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 answer obviously is going to be well, you should be saving the the, the twenty thousand kids or the or the several thousand kids. Um, but can you make that choice in that moment? So it feels terrible. It, it, I mean, you know, it, it reads terribly as well because you go like you hear yeah. someone who's there, he's at the precipice of it. It's life saving, uh, and the, the 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 thing that he has to do is to make this impossible choice for himself, which seems to be put upon him by 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 everybody else around. Um, is it correct? I, I I think it's completely correct. It's like someone who says, like, I want a heart transplant, but I refuse to stop smoking. Mm. My my question would be, why doesn't he want to have the vaccine? Because he's scared because one of the side effects of the vaccines uh inflammation around the heart. Yeah, and one of the so. symptoms of Omicron is inflammation. So yeah. the thing is after you have a transplant, you have to have a metric ton of drugs for the rest of your life so yeah yeah it's it's the yeah. consequences thing again and yeah. yeah i suppose joe you're right you just it, it comes down to ethics mythic medical ethics um well it's, it's kind of a calculation you, you also do you go like okay well here's the thing that i can avoid and and try to avoid beyond this point well maybe i should be allowed to take this path and be really paranoid about never coming across omicron which is a mathematical uh, impossibility uh, by the way i've been fact checking myself in the last few minutes about about uh remdesivir i, I, I i've uh, conflated the two uh it doesn't get better when i say hydroxychloroquine though it's <laughs> <laughs> or bleach oh no not, still no bleach getting into this but they're they're, they're like but I then said, you, you know. yeah but we're back to the heart though you got to wonder yeah. why because uh, as we're going to discuss about trust um trust in media is so bad there's got to be an agenda behind that story. Why did they put that story up? You know, what, what, where, where, where are they trying to get the the rabble to go with that story? Yeah, well, it's appeared. It's appeared in every publication like around the world. So, um, if the if it started in a media with an agenda, it's sort of and and the family went forward to the media to sort of make the case, right? Right. Because uh, you know, young man, you know, all that sort of yeah. stuff. So obviously, feel for feel for the family and. Um, you know they're potentially going to lose him, but you know they've got a they've got a policy in place, and 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 vaccination is part of the part of the thing that you've got to do everything you can so yeah. that the investment of this heart in your body is the best investment is the best way for us to use this precious heart yeah. from an, yeah. from another donated by somebody else who's yeah you know, another giving family up their life right yeah yeah so you know it's a it's but it's not an easy one to you know have an you know the well, passions the, the, the passions are high but it's not an easy yeah. thing to sort of you know well, the, the story being the story it is may have nothing to do with agenda, really. I mean, it's one of those. Uh, I, I mean, if if I'm I'm just looking at it from a writer's perspective, right? It's the perfect way to get everyone interested, right? It's like well, no matter how you feel about this, you you've got to pop it open to read it, right? Even even if you completely agree with the with, with whatever's being said, uh, you still have to open up that article to agree with it because it's it's mm -hmm. you, you can see the controversy in it, you can see that there's a different view, and you just want confirmation or you want to have a fight about it, you know. Yeah. 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 It's not an easy oh. one, right? Yeah. Yeah. All yeah, right. Yeah. Let's move on to the environment. And um, I want to start off with some really good news. Susanna hassan who I finally worked out how to say her family name correctly. <laughs> anyway, she's been appointed as Senior Vice President and Head of St Sustainability for Asia Pacific and Japan for SAP. 
And um, I just wanted to say, I'm, I, every time I've been on LinkedIn or even Facebook this week, I've just seen a big smiling face of Susanna on my screen. And I'm, I'm just so delighted for her. She's, she's an example of somebody who has worked really hard for a really, really long time. And that hard work has been recognised. And this is an opportunity for her to create massive change at scale across the entire region. And um, just want you to know she's been a regular on the No Show. And I just wanted to know that we're here to support her and cheer her on all the way. So I don't know if you, you know, if you guys want to add anything. I know, Joe, you've met Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, congrats. Uh, I, was, I was giving my kid advice on what to look out for in terms of careers down the road, right? And it used to be, I, I, I don't think uh, if you were interested in the environment when you were young, uh, that would be a way to write your own check in the future. Um, but there's a little bit of that. I mean, if, you, if, you're, mm. if, you're, if you're being entrepreneurial right now and, uh, and you combine a bit of marketing and a bit of trend spotting as well, uh, to be someone who's an expert in the environment and perhaps have a business degree as well, you'd be pretty much in demand in the next 20 years. Yeah, any green tech. Uh, if you're going to go to law school, study sustainability. Um, if you're if you're a leader of business, you want to be a CEO. You better know your sustainable uh, development goals. You know, it's yeah. We uh, this 2022, the yeah. beginning. Of, it's just there's a surge. You know, and uh, we're we're on a new path for humanity. Uh, whether in time or not, it's another thing. But um, one of the so – let's talk about some of the other news in the environment. Didn't have time to talk about this last week. The headline is, Chemical Pollution Has Passed Safe Limit for Humanity. All right, mm. so I wanted to bring this up last week, but it actually requires a little bit more focus and it didn't fit within what I was talking about last week. But the cocktail of chemical pollution that we've got in the world now, right now threatens the stability of the global – ecosystems upon which humanity depends. This is a different topic to the climate crisis in most people's mind, like the waste crisis, the climate crisis, the chemical crisis, they're actually all different things. So we're not just dealing with one big thing that needs to change. We're dealing with lots of different things. But plastics are a huge part of the concern, as well as 350,000 synthetic chemicals the majority of which have never been studied for safety. And this includes pesticides, industrial compounds, and antibiotics. I think it was last week in the, in the weekend reads where I shared an article on the amount of deaths per year based on antibiotic, antibiotic resistance. So this is a really huge issue because it's not just the antibiotics we take, it's also the ones we eat through like cows and chickens and stuff, right? <laughs> anyway, but chemical pollution threatens the Earth's system by damaging the biological and physiologic or physical processes that underpin all life. So you're treating a crop with chemicals, uh, but that can also kill the bugs in the ecosystem around that crop, and that impacts the health of the soil, the cleanliness of the water, and lots of other things. So chemical Production has increased 50-fold since 1950, and it's projected to triple again by 2050. So plastics are also projected to triple by again by 2050. Okay, so here, here's the big piece of this story that I think is important. The chemical pollution planetary boundary is the fifth of nine that scientists say have been crossed. The others are global heating, the destruction of wild habitats, loss of biodiversity, and excessive nitrogen and phosphorus pollution. We're doing a good job, aren't we? <laughs> uh, I mean, seriously, I mean, and the, the, the whole pollution, chemical pollution thing, you kind of look at, you know, all of Europe's water, all of their water is full of these uh, yeah. chemical. Uh, uh, so many of these chemicals basically go into the environment, that's it, that you, there's nothing you can do, they're there forever. Um this piece, I, have you, did you guys have a chance to read it? I didn't read that one, no. No, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This one, yeah, it's a big one, you know. We've passed five of the nine planetary boundaries. You know, th this thing about the chemicals that we consume, um, th th that's the crazy thing about the world we live in right now. I mean, the, the, the idea of the free radicals that we face all the time, right, it's all, it's all around us all the time. Uh, I think uh, the one that really got me was the forever chemicals that we've uh, yeah. we've we've also consumed, right? Uh, things mm -hmm. like Teflon, 
uh, which because of how good it is at not mixing with other stuff means it never breaks down. And if uh, it enters your system, it basically is there forever. Uh, it becomes part of your 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 makeup. Um, I I and, and I know that my solution to most things is technology, and I go I go like okay, this. Therefore, we need to figure out how to 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 counter it. Um, I, I'm I'm very much for self-preserving cures, right? Things things being driven by a massive need, and 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 some of these things are. I know what you're trying to do when when you talk about these things is is saying like it's time to stop the supply side. It's time to stop uh, yeah, putting more bad chemicals out there. It's time it's time to stop putting more carbon in the air. All this stuff and all that. And what I I am, am trying to do is I think when when this when this when enough of that pain builds up, someone goes and solves the problem. Hopefully on the other side where they go like let's create this super carbon eating machine. Let's create this super whatever you know chemical cleansing machine or, or or let's create a super lung for the earth or whatever it is that's my kind of uh you know other side of the story for me yeah. I, I i'm always looking out for a tony stark in real life you know that kind of thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> the problem with the problem with that sort of way of thinking for me is that people think that we can continue as we are and technology will solve the problem but we can't continue as we are we have to fundamentally shift how we how we live, yeah. how we buy, how we consume. Right, um, the whole chemical thing. You know, my, my boys, you know, might get McDonald's twice a year, and I'm constantly talking to them about the reason you're not having McDonald's, and there's many many reasons, but the reason is because it's it's not food, it's chemicals, and you know, it's not pure food. They, I, that's what I want, and then I'll tell them, how do you feel after you eat it? And I make them pay attention to the, the feeling in their body because when when I was a t like sort of later teenager, McDonald's was a very exciting thing in Australia in the eighties when we got it. And then I don't know, I just sort of started noticing that my face really itched, and um, I don't know if you oh, you probably didn't even eat it, Philippa, but um, Philippa was always a vegetarian and then she became celiac, so probably McDonald's hasn't been a big part of your life, right? But the physic, I noticed the physical thing, and then Steve took one of the boys off for McDonald's when they were young, and when they came home they were being an absolute turd and, and Steve was getting really grumpy and I'm like you don't have any right to be grumpy with him because you've given him the food that has turned him into a turd so you've got to put up with this um, <laughs> because you know the food does have an impact on you and then you know when we were in America on a holiday especially around the whole Disney and stuff I every every day the only food you had access to had was full of chemicals the bread had chemicals in it or high sugar um, we, yeah. We've got this, you know, we've just got this whole system around the world where we're, we're eating it, we're spraying it, we're putting it in our hair. We're, more, you know, females are moisturising their bodies with fake oestrogen, you know. It's like we, we've we've just allowed this chaos to be yeah. surrounding us and um, yeah. we just have to step back from it all and go, do we really want that? Like food production has gone like that, right? Um, the industrialization of food has gone like that. Oh, look, special needs kids gone like that. You know, <laughs> like all these um, health illnesses that didn't really exist in cultures around the world. Look, they're going like that. What's the common thing? Well, okay, so <laughs> this is, uh, uh, again, the old uh, uh, wrench to throw into things, right? Um same thing for 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 viruses. Uh, you, you get mutations, and that's really what mm. happens. Um, so, it, is is the mutation caused by all this additional stuff, all the chemicals in the system, or is it because mutations are going to happen? You know, uh, is the human being the human being? Uh, is it evolving? You know, we. We, we talk about all these numbers going up in this this, this direction, uh, and what we actually have corresponding to that is actually a higher survivability rate, as in like uh, it 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 used to matter a lot more how you behaved because if you were weird enough, the tribe you, you would either be rejected by the tribe or you would you would you would you would end up you, you might even die because you're of, of an act of violence, right? Uh, we've 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 and and this I'm I'm sorry to be radical about this, but it's like we tolerate so many different things that we do have a lot of of, of things now that are completely different. So your 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 uh, someone who has uh, special needs, for instance, uh, then becomes uh, 
you know that that, that 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 it goes back it goes back into the gene pool as well you know if you have special needs and it goes back because because what used to be uh, a, a reason for exclusion we we no longer allow or accept as a, as a reason for exclusion and so it becomes yeah. a, it becomes included so yes on one hand we have this correlation but i, I don't know whether it's causation you know it's, it's, is it is it just that i mean i i i i i i suspect that it is and it has something to do with it but I also think that this other stuff has to be factored in as well. You know, um, there, 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 there are too many people I know who who would not have survived the fifties. You know, they, they just would have violence would have happened to them. <laughs> you know, uh, but but they do because this is the world we live in today, right? So the yeah. natural selection has gone away. So what we have is now unnatural growth. Yes. But we're living longer. But uh, but the, is the what's the quality like for the majority of people? And that's well, the thing, you know, yeah. and I, I know a lot of people who are obviously focused on getting old and having quality quality of life, but I don't think the majority of people who are getting old and being yeah. kept alive, like, you know, Philippa and I and our family, we've had some family members kept alive for many, many, many years. And mm. I don't think that was necessarily a good idea for them, um, but because they could be kept alive, they were kept alive, you know. So, um, yeah, you know, it's just, you know, it's, a big philosophical discussion this one but um yeah no i i, I don't i don't envy it because we, we just had this 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 discussion and, and this is the kind of crazy math things that i come up with which make the rest of the family look at me and go like you're weird yeah. um we, we we're talking about for instance uh my my, my father-in-law who has a really good pension scheme and i said so what happens if he gets really ill right uh because my mother-in-law uh lives off the benefits of this great pension scheme as well uh, would you necessarily say when, when the time came that you'd go like, okay, we'll, 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 we'll pull the plug, uh, you know, on, on his life support. Uh, well, at the same time, you're pulling the plug on the health care and all the other benefits that go for mom as well. You know, yeah. it's, it's that kind of thinking that, 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 <laughs> we got, we got, uh, Wayne Chan sitting in at Lucky Plaza. He said his connection's really horrible, but he's, he's here and he's, he thinks it's an interesting discussion. Hello, Wayne. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, that's a really good. Yeah, that's, yeah. Maybe that's Crazy, me. Right? It needs to be a theme for because that's all part of, I mean, female poverty in, in, in the, in, in retirement age is, Philip, have you got, have you, have we lost your sound? Yeah. Yeah. We've lost your sound. Have you muted? Yeah. Female poverty in retirement age is a huge, huge issue around the world. And um, a lot of it is to do with, you know, the, the man has his, what, what do you call him, pension. Yeah, but, yeah, it, but it's a different situation for women. Do you want to check your mic, Philippa? No, you, we've lost your sound. Anyway, all right, I'll go on to the next one. So, I thought that, so many a couple of years ago, I read this article and it was talking about how trees are migrating. Did I didn't mention this one last week? Did I, Joe? Uh, not this week, but but I've I've heard about the idea of the trees migrating. Yeah, right. So there's this one, and it's called the tree line is out of control. How the climate crisis is turning the Arctic green, and obviously this matters for the people who are living in the Arctic, but also for the animals. But this is amazing, right? <laughs> These trees are moving, they leap, they call it leaping north at a rate of 40 to 50 metres a year. I, 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 when I read that story, I was just like, whoa, that's like people would see trees as solid. Um, last week we also talked about BlackRock, the world's largest fund, and the CEO told investors it was time to step on, on sustainability. But this week, it's Aviva Investors, and it said it will vote to try to get directors kicked out of firms that fail to make good on environmental pledges. It also wants bosses' bosses' pay to be linked to sustainability goals. So I think this is this is a really good sign um, that um, I think the financial services industry is going to be a huge part, uh, especially the investment side. I did a podcast with um, some authors uh, – talking about this and I encourage everyone to have a listen. Philip, are you here? No. Can you hear me? Yeah, there you yeah. go. Well, all right. I'm not sure what's going on. Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> um, Shell, uh, there's an article, Shell's massive carbon. So this goes back to the technology argument. Shell's massive cap carbon capture plant is emitting more than it's capturing. Um, <laughs> technology is not the answer. It will be part of the answer. Uh, but it's not the answer. Did you guys have any comments on either of those stories? I'm just trying to tick along now. Um, sorry, I was thinking about my microphone not working. Um, 
yeah, I think it, it, I think Joe was saying that before. He he thinks of answers in technology and all that sort of stuff, but it needs to be much more holistic, doesn't it? Yes. And um, yeah. you know, and it, it, if it takes the CEOs who are paid obscene amounts of money to kind of bear bear the weight of the shareholders and actually start doing something because the governments aren't, then that's if that's how it's got to start. That's how it's got to start. Yeah, I think it's going to be a huge part of it. So there's another read, and it's called Why I'm Staying Angry About Climate Change. This appeared in The Atlantic. I don't know if I should share this one with you. I think I read it last night after I shared stuff with you. But um, it's a really, really, I think it's a really important article. and It, sh- it talks through the, the emotions of someone who, who has fully faced up to the threat of the crisis the world faces and the impact that, that has on your mental health. And it offers some great advice on self-care. But the important thing about it is there's no way of avoiding going into periods of despair. There's no way you can avoid anger, frustration. You can't. You can't avoid it. Um, But if you are struggling, I'm always offering this to people. If you're struggling, I am always happy to talk to people. I might do some some, um, sort of sessions on, on my Facebook group. I'm not an expert in, uh, in mental health, but I am, I've am i been living with this every day for years now. It's a lot of the reason why I wrote my book, Uncommon Courage, because I wanted to talk about how I got to the mindset I've gotten to because I'm also dealing with this extreme uh, information all the time. And, the, you know, you guys will know, but there's days where I'm uh, I'm absolutely knocked out with, with fear, depression, frustration, anger, sorrow, Uh, fear for my children's future, like I feel, you know, they're starting to say things to me now or I know that they're starting to really get the sense of the bigger story that's going on in the world and and I've tried to protect them from that for as long as possible so that they could be children, but I can't protect them from it forever. So they're stepping into that now and I've got to be, I've got to, I've got to parent them through it. Um, But it's, and that's not an easy thing to do either, but um, yeah, it's not an easy thing to face. But if you're, if you are in that spot or if you're ready to move into the facing of the crisis and really really looking it in the eye, which is what it requires, um, I'm always here to help and support because it's not easy but it needs to be done and we need as many as possible doing it. So I know you guys didn't have a chance to read that, but any thoughts? Have you gone through your own eco-anxiety? Yeah, I think it's it's just the grief, isn't it? But it's a grief of something that's not gone yeah. yet. But you know it. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is, uh, I think people get overwhelmed, and sometimes you just need small steps, mm. and just one small step this week. Just did that this week, and then next yeah. week, and then before you know, it, you're looking back and you've made all these changes. And I think if people just stop being overwhelmed and just start moving forward. Yeah, no, you know, for the last especially for the last year, but last couple of years, I've been doing that, trying to share those sort of things that people can do, you know, um, tips, tricks, you know, just do it this week. You know, like um, one of the, there's so many things I could share, but uh, yesterday I shared, um, I think it was 27 single use items we yeah. can get out of our lives, right? Um, plant plant pollinators. You know, we've got some amazing pollinators, including this hummingbird moth that literally looks like a hummingbird. It's beautiful. And it loves our bougainvilleas. So when I'm swimming in the pool, I see this beautiful creature. Um, so now I've decided I'm going to plant more pollinators hanging off the edge of the pool so that I can attract more bees, wasps, poll- uh, moths, whatever. Um, you know, composting, um, not throwing things out. Yeah. Uh, everything, everything, everything you buy, you think about it in a different way. You know, where, yeah. where's, this, where's this going? You know, where does um, it come? No, but Andrew, where did it come from as well? I, it's not even where it comes from, but to, for you to buy it. No, for it's the whole also, cycle, where it came yeah, from, yeah. What, how, you know, it, you buy, like I try to buy one good thing and we don't upgrade phones, and, you know, and good quality furniture and, and you just keep it. Yeah. You don't need a new lounge suite every two years. You don't, yeah. you know, all that sort of stuff. You don't need a new Christmas tree theme every year either, right? Yeah. No. So it's all that, it's all that sort of stuff. It's just, we, just, just shrinking our lives back. We've got, we've got to shrink our lives back because. Yeah. I'm sick of picking up the rubbish off the beach. <laughs> so it's are a lot of, of other people. It's kind of nice mm. to have a, have a less of a bigger life, to be honest. No, no. To, yeah, it's kind of nice. There's, there's joy. There's joy in lifestyle change. 
Yeah, like we've got a veggie garden and tomatoes and all the herbs, compost, yeah. chickens. We've got our rabbits. It's really yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, another final story from the on the environment. Uh, Jordan Peterson is in the hot seat again. Do you guys know Jordan Peterson? I've heard of him. He's he's one of those people I have not looked into because other people say so. <laughs> I've avoided him. Right, right. No, he's well. He, but look, a lot of men, uh, especially um, yeah, men, men who are struggling with their mental health, sort of um, really respond to him. And yeah, uh, you know, um, I, I, uh, he said some derogatory stuff as far as women is concerned, which is where a lot of the negative rhetoric started. And I, I'm sure I've got friends in my community who've got very strong opinions on him. But he did speak on Joe Rogan's po podcast this week, and remember, he's the guy on on Spotify yeah. that um, people are trying to get off Spotify. Um, but basically, he said that the cl claiming the climate was too complex, to, so he claimed the climate was too complex to be modelled accurately. So the climate scientists have described his comments as stunningly ignorant, uh, <laughs> that he has mixed up weather predictions with climate projections, because, yeah, they can't be done long-term weather projections. And it's and then one, one, another one said, it's as, it's, it's as if someone with zero expertise and knowledge made comments about something he knows little about <laughs> so anyway stay in your own lane joe oh no joe uh jordan <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was, I, was, I swear i was just thinking it i was just thinking it <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know it was, you, it was kind of the funny. best thing about this time is and in australia um normally the scientists they like they they went into science for a very good reason because you know they don't they want to sit in the lab and do stuff but now they're just they're, they're up to pussy's bow with people that have no idea saying stuff. So we've got some guys here are just roasting people online, and it's it's because they're so clever. It's a it's a sight to behold, and they just are smashing them with like facts and just acerbic wit, and it's just they're just getting them, and it's like it's a joy. We so if nothing else, yeah, we need the it's intelligent people participating. Well, they, well, the, those intelligent people are now being added and hashtagged every time something comes up. So they're being forced to engage as well. Um, yeah, good. But even funny things like uh, Victoria Police, um, some one of the journalists here made some ridiculous claim that the, the kids on the beach were being watched by, um, you know, the helicopter. And Victoria Police went on to this woman's site and said, ah, oh, nah, we were just doing this. <laughs> so people are... <laughs> Inter and and comb and and batting back all the yeah, false yeah. information. That's, that's great. It's good. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, that's what we need all over the world. And uh, yeah, it's uh, something I'm talking about a lot. Too many smart people are going away because they don't like the conversation. No, uh, yeah, yeah they, they, think... they need to get involved because because we need the we need the smart people involved in the conversation because. But smart you know, people don't think they're smart enough. Well, they, that's, well yeah. it, it also is a little bit about patience and stuff like that because I, I invited my sister to listen into the to the show last uh, a, a few weeks ago, uh, and she's uh, in the category of smart and she can process a lot of stuff, right? And she did get to the point where she said, like, I, I got to about an hour, then I ran out of ears, right? Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, uh, that's probably true. <laughs> so the, the, there is there is a bit of that about that as well, as in like I I, I find that I have I have some friends who, who, who very intellectually. Uh, put shortcuts onto everything. They figure out this and all that. Great. Now, now they come up with shorthand for this, and that's done. I come up yeah. with shorthand for this, and that's done. And a lot of these longer discussions uh, are just not longer discussions for them because they they, they just they just look at it and go like, no, nope, you're wrong, and that's it. And and they don't, they don't have to spend any time justifying it or arguing with it and all. That. They're, they're done with it. So uh, there's a bunch of the, 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 it's more the it's actually uh, more of a rarity to find someone who's really worked it out. Who's going to spend time trying to convince everybody else why it's correct or wrong? Right. Uh, it's, it's somebody else who's like me, who's perhaps you know driven by some other kind of need uh, that 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 uh, will use this 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 the, use the correct knowledge to achieve those other things in in mind, right? So that that says right. more about my psychology than my than my intellectual <laughs> ability. Oh, mate, for me, it's like such a privilege to be able to every week be able to sit down because because I'm reading all this stuff and I'm watching all this stuff. Once a week, I can sit down and talk to people about it, and you know, I'm I, I don't presume I'm always right, and I'm always happy to be wrong, because uh, I'd rather I'd rather know that I'm wrong so I can I can learn, you know, exactly right. 
Well, um, I, I, I'm also just, I, I, there's one thing that, that I thought about just a while ago about value as well, because you know the people sometimes who who see the, the the environmental problem is too big for them to make a real difference, right? Uh, and sometimes people talk about things like you know just uh, rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic as as, as, a, as a bad as as a bad thing. Um, you know, I, I I like to look at things from an economic standpoint, and I like to look at things in terms of value. And even if what you do is insignificant, if it's not going to make a difference at all, but it increases the value of your life, I'm okay with that. You know, yeah. so I'm I'm not I'm not necessarily the kind of person like if I if I you know if 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 somebody I, I meet has a belief which is based on something that's completely untrue, but for whatever reason it's making them feel good. I feel there's an obligation for me not to go in there and change that thinking and and make their life less meaningful. There's 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 no need to do that, right? If if they're literally happy where they are with a false okay. belief and it doesn't hurt anyone. Okay, yeah. yeah. You know, let let them yeah. let them be. No, absolutely. And 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 we're not invading, we're we're participating in the social sphere and people can choose to come and listen yeah. and yeah. Yep. you know interact we're yep. not enforcing there's no, no, no i don't i don't, I don't so, feel that we're forcing ourselves on anybody at all this is yep. uh by by no means an intellectual date rate that's uh you know <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> all right let's move on to the theme of the week and uh no, normally philippa would get to have a theme but i sort of force this one on you sorry but um this came out last week and we didn't have time to uh you need you need to spend some time on this report before you can talk about it. And this is Edelman's trust barometer, which is now in its 22nd year. And I've been tracking this report for more than half its life because I've always found it a really, really important topic as far as the profession that I'm in. And obviously the, 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 the tr trust within our societies has been progressively getting worse. So they always come up with a theme, and this year it is the cycle of distrust. Now, Joe, I know you didn't have time to read the whole report. And by the way, if you guys want, there's a, can you see that? There's the, the Trust 10. It's a single page. It's got my highlights on it. It's a single page. You can download off the Edelman website, find it in my weekend reads, and you can just look at the top 10. But, um, Philip, it's your first time reading through the full report, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, how, how did you, because I, I, because I'm year on year reading it, what, what was your sort of impression? Well, my, I actually... I just love, I just wish everything can be presented in graphs mm. and and perfectly balanced shading and all the rest of it because it it, it really makes things stand out. Um, and, of course, because I'm Australian, um, a lot of what I was, I was looking at the Australian parts in there. But the most important thing, I think, from that is that uh, the, the worst, the, what they're finding in the world is the government and the media are divisive and a dividing force. But they're yep. not going to change because they want the clicks and they want the votes. So it's being left up to, you know, the CEOs and the industry to do the change, but they often don't have the wherewithal to make the changes that are needed. Yep. And, yeah, and so, like, I read through it and I took notes and just so much of it, like, uh, job, the worst things, job loss, climate change, hackers and cyber attacks, freedom as a citizen, which was uh, an experiencing... Um, racism or um, prejudice or racism. Um, yeah. So the government, the media, they feed the cycle of division and, and disinformation for votes and clicks. I mean, yeah. we know it, but when it's in black and white and when yeah. it's backed up with statistics and stuff, it's like, yeah, that's what we always thought. And, yeah, we have to break the cycle. It's a, it's a really beautifully put, put together report. And, and yeah. I, I, I agree with you. It's, it's, it's an, it's a, the way it's presented makes it easier to, to, easy to digest. So yeah. it tracks, I think, 27 countries, but um, business, NGOs, media, and government. And so year yep. after year, they do a comparison of trust between those four. So the good news is um, business is trusted, but also the NGO trust has increased again. Uh, so it's up to this year, and it's sort of been gradually coming up. A few years ago, they had they, they really got a hammering because there was a lot of uh, crises going on within the humanitarian sector. There was a lot of local sort of rapes and stuff that was horrible stuff going on um but government and media have gone down and as you said the government and media are seen as dividing forces whereas business and ngos are seen as unifying forces so that's a good thing um they look at um the, the media trust so or news sources uh so some of the wording sort of changed over the years but the four areas that they measure is search engines traditional media 
owned media and social media. So search engines are down all the way through down to social media, which is way down in the red. They have not fixed their issues and, um, yeah, the trust is incredibly low. Uh, fake news concerns are at all times highs where people think that uh, fake news or misinformation is going to be used as a weapon. 76% of people, and that's up four points. But, you know, the, the whole... We think, you know, this is government's role to fix it, but you look at Biden, right? How can he possibly fix the divisions in, in the US? It's impossible, right? Um, so they're not able to see it. And there's an article in the New York Times called Our Tribalism Will Be the Death of Us. Uh, mm. I definitely recommend having a look at that. Um, societal fears are on the rise. So uh, one of the things that you were talking about, Philip, were those sort of the five things. So it's job yeah. loss, climate change, hackers and cyber attacks, losing my freedom as a citizen, and experiencing prejudice or racism. So these are the societal fears, the strongest ones. And obviously job losses in this, in this time, uh, you, you yeah. would expect it. Climate change has never been number two. It's never been number one, but it's never been number two. It's usually, it's usually five or lower. So I was I was actually kind of relieved to see that it's going up there. And I've sort of, I was reading a report in, in America, like more than 70% of Americans are now concerned about the climate, which yeah. is which is a huge change. But basically what what this cycle of trust is um, creating is that it's basically going to threaten our societal stability. And so now NGOs and businesses are being looked at to counter out the divisiveness of business, of, of government and media. And media, yeah. So it's pretty like, whoa. But, um, yeah, so d distrust is, is the default. And um, one of the ones I always look at is um, uh, who, who do we trust? So a lot of the reports saying trust is more local, but it's that's actually always been the case. So, you know, in the top the top five people that you trust are your family, your friends, um, your, your social media community, influencers well, that are, are close to you and, and your colleagues. Yeah, right. So that's always the top five. Um, but scientists came in at number one, trusted. So that's a good sign. Mm -hmm. That yeah. is a good sign. Finally, really like in, a, sign. Like in a, a Hollywood blockbuster, they're listening to the scientists. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Family-owned businesses are the ones. And you, th you think about it, especially, I, I don't know, Thailand, Singapore, but we have all the, uh, what do you call it, franchises here. So, you know, someone, owned, but then they have to pay money to this person to pay yeah. money to this person to the shareholder. And and that you know that's you know the the wages are crushed to make sure more money goes up and all the rest of it, right. and then yeah and then you look at a, a, like a family owned business like the local butcher people people trust that that person because it it's all everything's right in that little little you know microcosm it, you yeah. know the money's not going up and up and up and people aren't being pushed down to get the, the more money up to the top so I suppose that makes sense. So one of the it, it's like ninety two or ninety five percent of businesses in Asia are family owned businesses, yeah. including you know, the really big empires. So it's a huge part of the culture in Asia. Um, but the, the other organisation that was trusted was the World Health Organisation, and okay. and the United Nations. So I was kind of happy to see that. So I mean, there's some really good there's some good things in it. Um, but when distrust distrust you know, is the <clears> default, <throat> there's basically you can, there's no opportunity for conversation, right? Yeah. Um, so what, one of the points, the big points, is that there's a collapse in trust in, of collapse of trust in democracies, and I, I just want to say to everyone, if you value being part of a democracy and you want to continue to have a democracy, then I think we've got to all stay. We've got to find our place in the middle for middle ground. We've got to, because our distrust will destroy the, the foundation of the democracies that we value. And yep. if you look at the bottom countries in the in in the in the league table, uh, Russia's been at the bottom for a couple of years now. Uh, the US has dropped and dropped and dropped. Uh, the UK, Germany dropped off significantly. Australia is that because has, is that because Angela Merkel has left or not left? Well, it, but... I don't know if she had a, would have even left by the time that this was done. It could be the handling okay. of the pandemic. But the bigger the biggest gainers were China. China's in at number one. UAE and Thailand. So, you know, you've got to figure, you know, the governments have done a good job during this period of time. And the biggest losers, Germany, Australia, the Netherlands, South Korea and the US. 
South Korea has been pretty low for a long time. I don't know what they're getting wrong over there, but um, yeah, UK's dropped down the bottom. Not surprising, yeah. but yeah, we've got a. But they're looking at business leaders as societal leadership is uh, is the future. So, but I suppose I suppose, in one sense, the politicians and the media don't suffer the consequences of their bad decisions generally unless they get voted out. Like they're not going to suffer the consequences of a terrible policy decision that takes money off single mothers. But a, a CEO will suffer the consequences of a bad decision because when they go to the annual board meeting, the the, the board meeting and, and the, the shareholders will say, nah, mate, you're out. Mm. So um, I suppose, yeah, there, there are consequences for CEOs and it may be, well, if we get a, a new government in, in Australia, we'll get a federal ICAC and, um, and you know that is going to go a, a huge way to what's an ICAC? Um, um, in, oh, integrity commission. Basically, right, going to go right. all the rots, like out of control rotting from these billions and billions of dollars are being wasted, and and go, it's retrospective. They're going to go back through it all. Fa the pandemic response has been atrocious as well. Um, you know. And once people see consequences starting to happen for bad behaviour, that's when trust is going to come back up. Yeah. But I also, also just think just just respect how we speak to each other, um, you yeah. know, the pol how the politicians are speaking to each other. It's just, gotten, it's just gotten more and more and more bitter. And, you know, obviously politics is always a game, a word mm. game, but it's, it, it hasn't been that. And then the media, you know, the way they speak, and then on social media, the way we speak to each other. Yeah. Um, you know, some level of respect in how we speak to each other needs to come back into the mix. But, you know, when people are buying from businesses these days, they will only buy from businesses, they will only advocate or buy from brands that they believe in. That's 58%. Um, yeah. Has that gone up? Uh, That's gone yeah, up? Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that wasn't, I, if I look at last year's, it probably wasn't even a strong yeah. part of this. Every every year they focus on little different bits and newer bits. Um, yeah. Choosing a workplace, sixty percent have said what business, what the business does, and how it is in the world matters. Um, how you invest, 64 percent. You know, making sure that you're a, a business doing good in the world, and eighty eight percent of institutional investors are looking more at ESG issues. So, um, what's ESG? Um, remind me, it's sustainable e environment, sustainable sustainability, and yeah, something. Yeah, it's yeah, something, something G. And yeah, it's 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 the sustainable lolly gobble so. bliss bombs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but the um the CEO is expected to lead, and they're expected to be the voice. They're not expected to um get involved in politics, but they are expected to be informing policy, and that's around jobs, economy, technology, automation, all those sort of issues. So, but that's yeah. a bit of a worry because they're not our they're not our elected officials, are they? No, but they but they're truly operating at a global level, and we need. We need people operating at a global level to fix the global problems. It's not a national issue anyway. So yeah. um, I've, been, I've been advocating for this for a long time and um, it's, I've had many arguments with people who said, oh, that's not the right way to be. And, and to me, it's the only way. It's the only way to be because, you know, a global business can make global changes that are going to matter for, for, for the entire yeah. world, right? Yeah. 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 Um, another thing that they were talking about is, so the, uh, the, the, the social divide between the wealthy, the high income and the low income. And you'll appreciate this one, especially Joe. We, we know the, the gaps there, but when people are well-informed and they classify well-informed as consults three or more news sources daily, reads business and or public policy news, uh, seek quality information. So they consult news sources with which they disagree and they check information against multiple sources. So these are things that we talk about all the time on the No Show. Uh, they're just the basic rules. Like if if you are angry and furious and fighting against the world, that's fine. But if you can just do that, right? If you're just reading the Daily Mail every day, you're only getting one point of view. It, all mm -hmm. media has a point of view, and it's not the journalist, it's the owner, the publisher, that yep. typically dictates that point of view. So the journalists are being hated, but actually... Um, look towards the publisher more than the journalist, but read more than three. And you know, when I say read more than three, if you're, if they're all three in the same <laughs> area, then, yeah. yeah. In Australia, all like how much is it? nearly seventy percent of our media is owned by the same person. 
So yes. you have to work really hard to get out of, out of a silo in Australia. I don't know if you do. I mean, from a digital perspective, everything's available online, right? That is true. But the, most of the people that are reading that particular brand aren't looking for other news. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's so much to be said about social pressure, social proof, right? We, we, we are social creatures. And uh, even if we know like 80% of the, the, the news is from one particular source, the, 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 the fact that everybody else is consuming the same news actually is what drives us to be attracted to the news, right? We want to know what your opinion is about this idea. We want to be uh, with a group of four out of five <laughs> rather than the one person who is disagreeing with the, with the, with the big idea. You know, it's it's not it's not it's not easy to stand up and say, well, this is uh, I, I know I know you all think this, but this is what really is happening. Mm. Uh, the group doesn't suddenly get enlightened and go like, oh yes, you're right. They're they're, yeah. they're they're much more likely to ask you to leave the meeting because you're making a you're making a, a scene, right? Yeah. Um, I, I I was thinking about the trust or uh, this this study about trust, and I it, it occurred to me that it, it's more like we've found out about the issues about trust rather than these things have actually changed. As in like, um, I, I was thinking about today's report as you read it and then applying it to the scenario that you that, that, that we are familiar with, with the 70s, for instance, it would still make sense. We don't trust politicians. We don't trust the media. Um, you know, we, we, we feel uh, companies are not to be trusted as much as this home, you know, like, like small businesses. Uh, I, I'm wondering how much of... Of, of, of a study like this actually is is to do with the fashion, like the, the questions that are being asked, right? Wouldn't have been asked before, you know? Uh, it, it, I think, no, I, think, I mean, having watched it evolve over the years, I think um, it, 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 it's definitely changed. And so like the 70s, right? Yeah. Um, we were all basically exposed to one opinion in the media. Yeah. Yep. We might have had two or three sources, but there was still one opinion. And um, in the US is a classic case of that, right? Now, it's not even two opinions that oppose each other. It's two opinions that oppose each other and all of the extremities on the way out from that. And mm. then, of course, operating within the silos of social media. So the distrust is, yep. you know, and when we look at the breaking down of democracy and the fears for democracy and they're having global meetings on how to fix it, um, I think it's you know, people living longer. We've got different demographics yeah. existing, coexisting that have never existed before who have different priorities, um, read different sources, believe different things, you know. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a lot of things. So th because this has been going on, this is why I value it, because it's been going on for a long time, I don't think it's just tapping into the information of the day. I think it's it's always said we should be paying attention to this. And every yeah. year it gets more attention. Every, yeah. this bar, the barometer and there's yeah. other trust reports that have come out but this is the one that I, always gets me it, it, it always yeah. I, it, I always sort of sit down and spend some time thinking with it but uh, I, I, societal I don't, I don't leadership is the yeah. opportunity of leaders today yeah I, I don't I don't disagree with the insights the, that 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 have come out, out out of it what I'm saying is that in terms of the the the, the, the scene right um Technology and communication is, is is changing the way now that you can you can you can then uh, form more demarcations between the bands. It, it used to be, it used to be a lot easier. You, you would sit on this side or this side, uh, and there wouldn't be space in the middle, so you'd have to kind of belong into either side. Yeah. And what happens now is that if you do a search literally on the most bizarre hobby in the world, you'll find a group. Right, and and that's that's kind of you know for me that's the kind of uh, of stuff that's happening to the world that is also a bit different. I was, I was I was thinking about how you know all these all these numbers in terms of the the, the, the kind of trust and engagement that, that has happened. It 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 is it could be a result of the evolution as well of of um, of learning of those skills how to engage. You know, like 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 uh, unfortunately the ones who are going to be the most untrustworthy are the ones who have Caught a cried wolf too many times, mm -hmm. and I think politicians have learned to get uh, your attention, uh, and then you find out, you know, that 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 they 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 uh, they they were lying or they, they didn't quite represent it correctly. The media is the same way as well. They keep doing that. They they've learned now how to get your attention, uh, mm -hmm. but they, they they disappoint you more often. So it, it's it's it really is. I find it's more like 
uh, yeah, they, they, they've learned one part of the skill, which is to get your attention. And unfortunately, the the, the, the flip side of that is going to be now that I got your attention, you're more likely to be disappointed with what you what 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 you you hear in the end. You know. Mm. Hey, Joe. Yeah, like, oh, sorry. sorry. No, I just, oh, think, I, just, I think I just think in the middle there's this. There used to be this kernel of kernel of news and knowledge and information, right? And then we still sat on these opposing sides, you know, whichever political parties you're on, yeah, right? Yeah. But then last week with, with um with Tim and he was talking about bef be before that we lived in these small communities, and if you if you're an annoying person within that community, the community would punish you, and then when yep. you change your behaviour, you could come back in. But this globalization. Or this digital sort of field of, of knowledge and information, uh, the, we, we haven't been able to make the adjustment into that and hold on to what we value as a society. And I think I think that uh, it was a really interesting point. And I think that's part yeah. of the part of the challenge. We don't know how to navigate this. Well, we, we don't really like it. I mean, if you think about what who is really doing that right now, and they're not very popular because they do it, it's China, mm. right? China, China is doing that. Uh, this behavior is not good. Sorry, yeah, <laughs> you, you've been cancelled. That is actually the scaled-up version of the village, uh, yeah. which people are unre very, very uncomfortable with. Everybody wants to be able to be slightly deviant, you know. Do you know there's a website and and <laughs> ladies get paid? There's there's um a website and ladies pay a men pay or someone pays money to watch so, a, a lady fully clothed yeah. sit, sit on birthday cakes. And someone is yeah. making a living out of doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Just sitting on a cake. Um, yeah. Also, I'd like to show you Jamie's cucumber that has just come out of the garden. Beautiful. Beautiful. Look at the size of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. you certainly stop someone scrolling through their feed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and exactly. then, like when you, oh, it's they're delicious. You leave it on the yeah. bench and everyone just slices it as they go past. So you don't use it in gin and tonic like most people here would do. Oh no, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> don't like gin. Yeah, yeah neither do I. Yeah. So, so the, the tagline for this uh, engaging uh, show will be: Philippa brought out a cucumber, and what she did next <laughs> will blow your mind. And yeah. here's the link to ladies sitting on cakes. Yes, <laughs> yeah, awesome. Hey, but look, please, if you haven't ever done it, spend some time on Edelman's Trust Barometer. It's 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 an easy read. You can look just the Trust Ten. You can look at that. But yeah. if it's like the climate crisis, right? If we want to fix this, we've got to come together as a community and fix it. And yeah. I, I'd like to think that we have the courage to be able to do that. Yeah. So, yeah. Any other news that you guys want to sort of talk about? Uh, b b before we go there, I'm just going to say that I, I, I know people look at politicians, governments, and all those people being low on the levels of trust as being a bad thing. Maybe it's not. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Yeah, maybe we should just get better people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah we, okay. Well, I mean, we really, we really have got the bottom of the barrel in oh, far mate, too many countries around the world. Just when you on. think they couldn't go any lower, they yeah, find exactly. they get in down into what's that primordial scum or whatever it's called. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, it's, it's, pretty, you, you, it's pretty spectacular. You you want to make, if you want to make the case for the end of the white man's dominance of the world, it's being made <laughs> all over the world right now. Right? Yeah. Like seriously, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to guarantee any other uh, alternative as well, because you know I think uh, as as uh, as some Asians have shown you, uh, we're capable of being as bad as well. So, you know, yeah, but, you know but the Asian this... countries are pretty high. I've got high trust, apart from South South Korea and Japan. There's a so, comedian in Australia. No, oh, what's a guy? He was in um, Crazy Rich Asians. He's a kind of Australian, not Ronnie Australian. Oh, Ronnie. Not Ronnie. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ronnie Chang. He was talking about. He was talking about governments and stuff. And he just said, just put an Asian bunch of people in charge of every government. They'll just get in there, get the job done, work long hours, not cause any fuss or bother, and just and then you know not be in the news, just get the job done. And it's like, yeah, it's clearly working, because like. <laughs> In oh, some, yeah, yeah, some exactly. places. I think yeah, it's like, exactly. you know, you know. Yeah. Well, at the moment, yeah. if that's going to clearly be a better option than the, the clowns we have in charge now. I, I think it's time for women. Oh, pff, the future the is female. No, the world's nurturers, you know, the world needs yeah. to be nurtured right now. And yeah. I think women and, you and know, men, men that 
I, I, I'm not, I'm, I would never push men out of the, out of the. No, but you know, at least you know, fifty percent representation from a political 51%. perspective. Fifty-one percent. Well, as as our <laughs> our dear leader said, uh, he believes in women, um, you know, achieving, but not at the expense of men. Mm. <laughs> On International Women's Day. Yeah. On International uh, Women's Day. So the other the other news, of course, was uh, Neil Young went uh, threatened to. Yep. Spotify and said either remove my music or Joe Rogan's podcast. And in response, uh, Spotify removes Neil Young's music. So I, I actually thought, you know, obviously there's a big contract there with Joe Rogan and that's why they don't want to remove his podcast. But um, I don't know. I kind of felt a little bit disappointed that some of the other big superstars didn't stand up and sort of support Neil Young on that. Um, consequences. Yeah. Well, People I mean, the, need to have consequences. Mm. Part, part of the problem is Neil Young has written some other uh, checks that were a little bit unpopular as well because he was really getting on about why you need to you need to have just pure music and he doesn't and he for the longest time he didn't want to be streaming his music because the quality was not going to be good enough he he had to have this you know super high bandwidth everything or else or whatever it is right so he he kind of established himself as a little bit of a fussy pot uh, right. in, in another area and so when he came up with this it's like oh it's Neil again. And and yeah, right. if if you're going to take a a marginal artist and going to threaten threaten the, the a mainstream business, yeah, Neil Young's not the guy. And you know, Beyonce would have far yeah. more luck. Or Gaga, yeah. Or Gaga, yeah. Yeah, right. All right. So, um, what what are you guys been watching? What's been distracting you? I know Philip Richard last week before school goes back next week. Um, what what's been capturing your imagination? Drop. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be hell. Uh no, we've been watching Succession and just mm. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, it's just dynamite. It's like you go, oh, that's Gina Reinhardt. Oh, that's Murdoch. Oh no, but now it's um the present and it's just oh the characters are just fabulous characters. Um yeah, and it's just it's just really well written. I think we've gone through – oh, so Ted Lasso was one – so Succession has just been these holidays that have kind of been a lockdown but not really. And then Ted Lasso was last time's lockdown. And then the last – well, the one before that was Shit's Creek was the one before mm. that. So we're going to think about each of the lockdowns, all six and, and half of them, as the show that we watched. Yeah. We're halfway through Shit's Creek now and I'm getting a bit bored. Uh, push through, push through. Yeah, uh, it's push one of those through. Things, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What episode – what are you up to? Uh, episode one for season four. No, oh, keep, you're gonna push going to a lot more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, <laughs> really? All right. Okay, Joe. Yeah. What about you? Um, well, currently I am watching the Ozark. Uh, oh, right. Jamie said Ozark. I have to. He's. We're going to start. He's going to watch it all again with me, so yeah. that I watch it. I, I'm a big yeah, fan of yeah. Jason Bateman, it, so yeah. It has. It has. Uh, it it has a little bit of potential to be. Uh, a kind of Breaking Bad, actually. It's very, it's very interesting in character. It does a character formation and stories and what happens. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the other yeah. thing you guys need to watch is Eight Out of Cats does Countdown. <laughs> Have you seen that, Joe? No. Yeah. What is it? Eight, eight, eight out, out of cats. cats does Countdown. So it's an English. Eight, eight out of ten cats Countdown. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Eight out of Jamie just did the same. Eight out of ten cats does Countdown. Um, it's yeah. a, it's a, oh, is it a quiz show? A panel show, basically. It's a, panel it's, quiz it's show, a little bit like this oh. show with a format. Yeah, and, and oh, funny. He's got a format. And two saucy wenches with little, you know, little pert girls. Uh, <sighs> you know. Oh, but they're smart pert girls. I've got to say at least. To yeah, be they're fair. really smart. Yeah, really smart they're really girl. smart girls. They're smart and gorgeous. So, yeah. yeah. All right, so, uh, uh, the, the other game, the other game show that you have to check out because it's so ridiculous is I literally just told you. I, I, I think I, 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 hang on, I, I think it's called I literally just told you. It's the uh, it's actually, by Jim Carr. Uh, oh yeah, Jimmy, oh, Jimmy Carr. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I literally just told you it's a it's a game show, and the way the game show is structured is as they're talking about stuff, uh, they'll be asking questions about what they just said a while ago. So oh. it'll and be it's, it, it's it's it, and and sometimes it, it's so ridiculous because the information is so clear and it's so they, they've had some real doozies of the show. I don't know how they find people who are capable of missing what's happening in real time, but uh, they Did you they say really Jimmy Carr. Know. Jimmy Carr or Alan Carr? Uh, Jimmy Carr. Right. Because yeah, Alan yeah. Carr's hilarious too. Well, yeah, uh, one, we'll... Of, one of my memories of uh, this pandemic time will be introducing our children to um, wrong humour. 
so yeah, off they're gonna color, not, off yeah exactly. They're both going to have a bit of you know they're going to have that bit of wrong sense of humor as that's their character, right? Um, yeah. And it's encouraged, obviously. So we, we, we watched some interesting ones. But anyway, we decided last Friday to watch The Hangover with them. Have you ever <laughs> seen The Hangover? <laughs> it's really funny. Uh, and so obviously tonight will be Hangover too. But I also watched uh, Respect for the first time just recently. It's up on uh, iTunes. Yeah. Uh, have you seen? Have you seen it, Jennifer Lawrence? Phenomenal. No, I haven't. We were supposed to take the kids from school to see it last December, but no, yeah. of course that didn't yeah. happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's up on. I mean, a phenomenal performance. I surprised a lot of the story about Aretha actually surprised me. Um, yeah, I wasn't. She, yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Um, but it's still a fantastic story. But yeah. well worth a watch. And just yeah. Jennifer Lawrence talent. Like, oh my god, Jennifer yeah. Hudson. Oh yes, yeah. I knew, yeah. I knew, I knew, I knew I got it yeah. wrong. It was one of the Jennifers. <laughs> Yeah. Well, after many Jennifer. Jennifer Lawrence, that would be an incredible performance. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and then she'd be in trouble for doing blackface. Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can't be doing that. All right. Bella Paz, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed Pleasure. being here. Yeah, it's we, fun. I, I thought we'd be here for a lot less time, but but <laughs> it, it never happens. So um, I will be uploading this up onto my podcast on Common Courage as quickly as I can once this is over. We're also going to have a week off next week because it's Chinese New Year. So, uh, uh, Gong Si Fai Chai to all of our Chinese friends. Gong Si Fai Chai. We're celebrating. Yeah. And um, yeah, just really want to say thanks. Thanks, both of you, for being here and being open and having a great chat about the stuff thanks that we think matters. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. If, Thanks, I, if, Joe. if I can just uh, say something to the listener right now, thank you for listening to this podcast on Spotify rather than Joe Rogan's. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. exactly. We're much better than Joe. Oh. That Joe. Yeah. That Joe. Not this Joe. This Joe's great. Right, guys. Yeah, this guy. This, this right. Joe's awesome. We love this Joe. All right, guys. <laughs> I will. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye. All right. See you guys. You